Oh, 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 where am I staying? Oh, it smells uh the homeless man waving a knife at me. Are you part cannibal? You have a dirty mind for pointing that out. <laughs> We're currently at Orlando International Airport. This is either gonna be the greatest video of all time or the biggest failure of my entire life. We're investing several thousand dollars into making this. This is the rundown. We're gonna be going to San Diego Comic Con. The problem is there's no tickets for sale. The last time they sold a ticket was in 2019. If you didn't buy a ticket then, you can't buy a ticket now. So, mission one, I had to buy a ticket off eBay from a sketchy seller. The only thing they were selling besides this ticket was this piece of art. A little worried this is gonna be a scam. Number two, I had to get a flight. The flight's like a thousand dollars. And number three, there were no hotels. It was either stay in a hostel or stay in the cute corner tiki hotel. I'm really stressed out right now. This could, be, this could be a bust, but this could also be the greatest video of all time. Our flight is gonna be boarding. No oh, All right, sweet dreams, Pablo. I'll see you when I get back. The whole Delta lobby smells like Christmas wreaths and cat urine for some reason. Okay, we've made it to Salt Lake City, Utah, and we have a layover for like an hour and a half, and then it is our final journey to San Diego. Some Jamba Juice. Utah Airport Review. Really enjoy the bathrooms. They're big enough. There's places to put things. The door, it's red light, green light, so you, you don't have people shake on the door. It's a privacy stall, so, so people can't be peeking in on you when you're trying to do your business. Let's go on our next flight. We just made it to San Diego. Mission one of our trip. We've made it. We are here in the promised land of San Diego. My buddy Matt is picking me up in a very luxurious car. You guys are not ready for this thing. And my chariot awaits. Wow, luxury baby. Right. Okay, so you had to either have a negative test within the past 72 hours or been vaccinated and boosted. So you showed them the clear app. I got my wristband, so I have to wear this for the next four days. I cannot take this off. This is another step in the right direction of getting into San Diego Comic Con. We are currently in Old Town right now in San Diego. We are going to supposedly the most haunted building, house. Um, it's the Whaley House. All I know is it's, they advertise it as America's most haunted place, which is a bold statement. So we'll see. <laughs> I texted the guy to pick up the ticket. He hasn't responded. Kind of freaking out right now. And then at 4 p.m. then we can check into our little tiki place. So we have about like four hours to kill. So we're gonna explore the San Diego area. I mean, worst case scenario, you get a fun filled trip to San Diego and you get to wave at everyone walking into the con. Instead of carving your name into a tree out here out west, they uh, carve their names and initials into cactuses. All right, this is where we're going. This house right here. The Whaley House, America's most haunted house. What's the most haunted like restaurant? What's the most haunted like apartment? I want, I want to see those places too. Now as you look well, you are standing on hallowed ground. No eating, drinking, smoking, or vaping when in the house. But do come in and let me share some stories with you. I have to ask a question. How did you get the name Bullet? Well, sir, from the movie my family loved. Oh. Remember with Steve McQueen? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same spelling. I like that you actually have bullets. I do, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are entering into the house. Ladies and gentlemen, this house is built in 1857, but this specific room was built in 1856. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here to feel the paranormal, show me by raising your hand. Ah, oh, fantastic. That is why we are here. Good. According to National Geographic, Travel Channel, and a whole slew of others, we are. America's most haunted house. And so we want to stay by these four walls. Ladies and gentlemen, all rise. As you walk through the tour of wealth, I will explain a few things and then I'll let you go on your own. I hope to see you again, but if I don't, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you guys see anything uh, scary? Scream twice if you get scared. Kevin. <laughs> going into the next room. But then he opens his general store here in his home. And in order to keep the business close to him, nobody wants to lose business, do they, sir? Mm -mm. No, he doesn't. So his three sons are named after business associates. Imagine if your name was in and out Burger. <laughs> Starbucks. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Whaley names his last son George after one of those, but George disappoints his father. In fact, he goes on to becoming a musician. Ah, yeah. oh, uh, musicians, exactly, no. Exactly, sir. He throws him out of the house. He spends the rest of his life drinking in a brothel. Yeah, that's not bad, I thought that. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Whaley is often felt in this room. Well, his actual desk and ledger is here, but all of his goods are in the closet. In 1857, he was considered San Diego's most handsomest older man. Stop staring now. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you will be going into the dining room next where the Whaley women are most prominent. And the death of a child, a little three-year-old, by poisoning. Ask them any questions you might have. If you can put your hand through them, well, that's your choice. What has been your favorite experience that you've had My favorite here? experience, I was, it was 11.30 at night. I was closing and I was upstairs. I had just shut the windows. You will see that in the theater. I was leaving and there was what seemed to be a cloud in front of me, but it was the size of a refrigerator, not a particular shape of anybody. And I thought maybe some exhaust had come in from outside. You know, there were a lot of cars there. And so after I shut that, I looked at it a minute, and then I just thought, I'm just going to walk through it. And when I did, I got damp, wet, all the way around. That's what she said. <laughs> so good luck with all that. Keep walking. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> Kellogg's sold poison. And uh, I guess there wasn't before like child caps. I guess this poor little girl got into the poison. Okay, we're heading upstairs right now. What is this one? Oh, that's creepy. Oh, that is terrifying. They put like a projection of some an old lady or an old man singing. They have, like a stage on the second story. Bunch of places to sit. Oh well, there's like a full on stage. Oh, there's a person. It's a ghost. <laughs> <gasps> Matt, the, the curtains are moving. It, it's the wind. Matt. No, 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 no. It's the most haunted house in the entire world. <laughs> the floors, they're creaking. <gasps> I think just the ones you're stepping on are creaking because, like. Because I'm haunted. I'm possessed. I'm making them. Creak. I have so many questions as to, like, why there's a courthouse downstairs. Yeah. Why there's a. Theater, theater upstairs, courthouse downstairs. But then there's also like two bedrooms like right here. Another general store. A general store, like what was this place? Like a little piano here. Okay, let me know if you guys see any uh, ghosts pop up on the camera. Uh, chose that little doll to hang out here and that little doll. Oh, look at, look at that little one. Just creeping, little eyes peeking out. Tucked in like a little mummy. You have a dirty mind for pointing that out. <laughs> What is going on? The, so there's the big doll, right? And there's little legs hanging out from underneath the skirt or the dress of this doll. So is it a little doll underneath there, underneath the dress? That's not appropriate. Okay, so this is uh, one of the bedrooms upstairs. So. By the way, I kind of like this bedroom. Yeah, decent sized bedroom. Decent sized bedroom. Okay, I really, I really <laughs> want to believe the ghost is doing that. I really want to believe the ghost is doing that. <laughs> So we're gonna go into this room now. San Diego State University. I guess this is stuff that they dug up from around the house. That's pretty cool. Get some little archaeology. Had lime cola. They dug up little army man, shotgun cartridges, a bunch of the plates that they dug up. All sorts of little bottles, little medicine bottles. They even found assorted marbles. And here's a little video of them uh, sifting through the dirt. Oh wow, they went down deep. Alex Alexander was apparently the pioneer of California. And I think these are all originally from the house. A little um, doll tea set, a copper pitcher. Now this dress was owned by Mr. Whaler's wife. 
Still one of those creepiest dresses I've ever seen. A top hat that belonged to Thomas Whaler. Lillian's revolver that they found. Oh wow. So before they built the house, they used to do executions here, and this was the archway to the gallows. Just a standard fun time, James. <laughs> standard yeah, I mean, fun time. What a perfect place to build your family home. You said three people died, were executed here. Yeah. And then he wanted to build well, he got the land cheap, probably. He That's got the land a, for yeah. $1.50 an acre. It was dirt cheap. <laughs> no, guy, no one else wanted the land, so oh. I think that dollar fifty back then still only equates it's the $35 an acre now. Another angle of the room they were just talking about. Don't buy a house on a plot that was used for hangings. Don't randomly decide to go on random trips throughout the whole year and abandon your kids. With a bunch of ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then don't use the wood from the hanging place to then build a house. We found out that Mr. Whaling was at the last hanging and it lasted for 30 minutes. Then he bought the land and built his house and then used the wood from where the hangings would happen for the construction of the house. God, it looks like we're going into heaven right now. <laughs> we finished? What'd you think? Yeah, that's cool. Cool history. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually haunted. My thing is like, okay, yeah. about ghosts. Hey, everybody sees the old Civil War soldiers and everything. Yeah. They don't see Stacy just walking down the street with exactly. like from the 90s wearing a ice cube t-shirt. Yeah. Like, it was it was fun though at the start with the one guy where he like got into the I, I, I was trying not to laugh <laughs> It was good. Highly recommend going to it because the story behind it is weird. I'm still trying to understand how do you claim the most haunted? Because it's one thing to say like, oh, we're a haunted place. National Geographic. Uh, yeah, yeah, National Geographic. Now right outside the house is Whaley's Coffee. I guess this is a little snack shack. We just hopped into the gift shop. It's right next door. You can buy um, Bigfoot and little um, knockoff vampirinas. Uh, they have Celestial Spirit Board. Uh, this is a pretty cool shirt. San Diego, California. Bigfoot wearing glasses with a bunch of alien blood on them or uh, predators looking at them. Now they have shirts for the Whaley House. Let the spirit be your guide since 1857. Certified Whaley House Ghost Hunter. They have magnets for the Boo Crew. And they have the Whaley House with like a ghost in the window. Whaley House San Diego. I saw Bigfoot. They buy spirit candles here. What is that thing down there? A little angel. First off, you can get hauntingly delicious double chocolate hot cocoa. They do have ghost gloves. What, what is a Cheerios Logos? Move over, gopher grabber. They have Yeti grabbers here. And they just stuck them in some like knockoff Ugg boots. Look at the luchador mask and look at the Mickey luchador mask. Look at that. Then they have a Spider Man. They got like a baby one and then kind of like an Incredible Hulk one up there. They have Yoda and they even have Paw Patrol. And they also have a Mario one. But the, I was going to get this one, but it's kids only. We have to go into this gift shop, see what's going on in here. Oh my god, <laughs> it's to put like your little creamer. You oh pour, god, the, cre whole, oh you pour the creamer out of it. This is like, what is going on? I have a feeling there's not an elephant underneath that wrapping paper. <laughs> I love like the knockoff toys. This is like the frozen knockoff toys. Look at Elsa. Look at Elsa, look at that masterpiece right there. Oh my god, I think this is what I'm gonna buy. Now this cost us nearly $20. No cast the, member discount on yeah, this. This bootleg is a work of art. It looks like it's walking through the Whalen house right now, terrified for its life. <laughs> Lloyd's Pest Control is here. I wonder if they're uh, cooking some meth underneath there. You in there, Mr. White? Put a cigar up to nose. You have bought it.
Now, there's so many ghost tours here. Um, I like the advertisement, right? We use meters like on TV, see vortex energy that hovers above the ground, see real ghost photo. God, I really want to do this, but we're not going to stick around. There's a Jack Skellington poncho. Okay, it's got Mickey ears and everything. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like a little kid hat, though. For we don't talk about Bruno. Right there, the fourth, third one from the bottom. This is the mother of all succulents right here. Thomas the tank engine bubble gun. It's time to get something to eat. Now, my tip is you gotta ask the employees and the locals, where should you eat? And everybody told us to go to the, the Old Town Mexican Cafe. Looks like they're making fresh tortillas. Good news, <laughs> big breakthrough right now, okay? I texted the guy like three hours ago. He had yet to respond. He finally just called me. He said he put in the number wrong. He's a real person and he sounds like I will be getting my ticket. Thank, thank God, it's, it's happening guys. It's gonna happen, I hope. I know we still don't have it yet, but cross my fingers. We just finished. Solid meal. I like the uh, carnitas. Really good, simple, just quality, good Mexican food. I got a watermelon margarita with tahini. Ooh, it was so good. Right, we're currently at Balboa Park. Uh, you might remember this. Didn't they film a, a Taylor Swift music video here? They, I think they did. Yeah. Some wonderful artwork here of Slimy the Snail. I'm going to show you guys the wonderful fountain here. Now, Balboa Park is such a, kind of like a peaceful place to kind of hang out, bring your dog, bring your kids. <laughs> This might be the biggest pride flag I have ever seen. This thing is massive. Now, I've already been to a bunch of the museums that they have here. This one caught my eye. First off, the font made it look like Carabas. I got drawn in to that. And then it says cannibals, myth and reality. Museum of us. We're learning about cannibals, I guess. Why not? It's, it's, a, it's a sketchy Kevin adventure. The Hannibal Lecter Funkos. So they have one of the TV show of Hannibal. We got The Road, World War Z, Bob's Burgers. I guess this is all the time cannibalism has shown up in media. The Walking Dead. Massive Silence of the Lambs poster. Now I have this action figure from Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, when they're worshiping Captain Jack and they try to eat him. Who is a cannibal? Do they have Texas Chainsaw Massacre? They have Leatherface up there. They have Hansel and Gretel right there. So it was talking about kind of the history behind cannibalism, right? So the word man-eater was like the worst insult they could come up with during the ancient Greeks and Roman time. This talks about traveler's fears, right? In the 1500s to 1800s, cannibalism was a huge fear with people. So they're having people write down their biggest fears. Um, we have very important fears like Batman, Yo Mama, driving my car into a body of water, Liam Neeson. Yeah, he is pretty terrified. Let me know what you think my biggest fear is gonna be. Pickles. So it looks like Columbus, when he was traveling, came up with the word cannibal because he um, encountered a group called Car Ribs. And then I guess he nicknamed them cannibal. said here they were displaying human remains but since they didn't have consent from the individual or relative that they had to take away the human remains are you part cannibal so this kind of talks about the different remedies that they would use from human fluids and body parts so like they would rub human fat on infected areas to ease pains it's not cannibalism but there's a lot of stuff where they like used human parts for things but they weren't just straight up eating people to eat people. I have no idea where we're going into now. This is creepy. Okay, feels like some proposals about to happen. All right, so this is talking about survival cannibalism, like right, you're stuck on an island and, or a raft and you have to eat someone. So this whole section is kind of talking about like when humans are pushed to starvation, right? They have to turn to cannibalism sometimes. Okay, so this is talking about Jamestown, but I guess how they had to eat some people to survive the winter. So I guess in Jamestown, there was a girl named Jane that they ate. Uh, they found on her body all these knife marks all over the skull so you could tell where kind of cut off the flesh. Ugh. It's like if you were stuck on a raft, right, and you had to draw straws, whoever gets the short end of the stick, it's killed and eaten. Oh, you drew the short uh, straw. I, I drew the only straw. Uh-oh. What do you taste like? 
These brains are the best thing I've ever tasted. Woman who survived being shipwrecked. Oh, God. Game. Yeah, what, what would you like to snack on today? You know, kidneys are looking pretty good. Oh, oh it actually oh. works too. Look at that. So inside they have all these different, um, Oh, 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 it shows oh, you how many facts. calories are in that the, like a thigh, right? 5,300 calories. Only 1,100 for the lungs. There's a liver. That's 2,500 calories. I think the thigh is the best one for uh, yeah, calorie-wise. Th thigh is looking pretty good, but uh, I feel like, let's see how the brain is. Brain is 1,800 calories. Uh, avoid the forearm. You're, you're going to go on a diet with the forearm. Yeah. Interesting. I never thought about how many calories like a human would be. It's just strange that we're even talking about this right now, but interesting. So this kind of talks about how we're kind of cannibals. You know, people eat like placenta pills and everything and like blood transfusion or human organ donor transplant. What's interesting on this one is it's talking about like different forms of cannibalism, even ones that people might not think of it, but then like trying to see where the line gets drawn. Drinking urine, I guess is cannibalism. So I guess it's anything that comes from human. humans. Boogers. Cannibalism. Interesting museum, right? Because it, uh, I thought it would be kind of about like Jeffrey Dahmer and all the serial killers, right? But it kind of talks about how the Europeans kind of created cannibalism and the fear of everything. And like, what is cannibalism? Where do you draw the line? Like, it, it made you think about everything. And what would you do if you were in a survival aspect? Would you uh, just rather be dead or would you, in order to survive, have to eat someone? How would you feel about that? We're going to the next little part of the museum. They have these massive carvings. I feel like they're just replicas of Mayan carving. Three-headed skull man on his knees with some uh, shish kebabs or carrots. We're gonna go into the living with animals exhibit. I think it's gonna talk about our first animal allies, the wolf, which became the house dog. And over here, we have a paper mache furry. It talks about all the different animals that we domesticated over time. Even snakes, little mini pigs. Right here is uh, Rizzo the Rat's parents. And if I'm reading this correctly, cockroaches were brought over from Africa. <laughs> right there with Jurassic Park and the Jurassic Park camo on the steering wheel. Uh, we made it to our tropical hideaway. Uh, it's an interesting part of town. A lot of homeless people around. But uh, we're staying at the uh, the Chadwick. Staying. Oh, it smells tropical. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, they put chocolate. This is actually kind of sweet. Is the chocolate? Yeah, because the chocolate. <laughs> okay. All right. So far, is it perfect? No, but I think it'll get the job done. So we have made it to the uh, Tiki Bar. It's in a very interesting part of town. I, uh, every single window I look out, uh, there's a homeless encampment around the building. Uh, but the room is nice. Um, I think for four days I paid $1,400 for this room. So yeah, um, I guess we should do a little uh, Airbnb cribs. I hear them yelling outside. First thing, we have uh, the Tiki Bar. Then we have smoke detector, but the battery has been pushed out. I don't know why. I do like this. You come in and they have some cute little chocolates for you and everything. This controls the TV or the fan. That controls the TV. Then we have the bed. Okay, let me let me show you this. Oh my god, that hurts so much. Oh, this is one of the hardest mattresses I have ever laid on. You know, like, if you ever, like, went to camp, you sat on those kind of, like, prison mattresses, and they're, like, a little squishy, and they're, like, plasticky. Uh, this is harder than that. This literally feels like a brick. Let's, uh, 
keep the torque going. There's all sorts of this like white fluid on the top. I don't know what that is, but uh, we, we got a little microwave here with an iron and funky lights. Only missing one of them, but then we get, we get a little flat screen TV, a little place to work. This is the AC unit. It's a little loud, but it helps drown out the people um, yelling outside. You got a little mini fridge. They got some uh, coffee. Everything looks nice and clean. And there's like some, uh, some wind chime with, with a bird up there. And the bathroom door has one of these, uh, oh, oh God, oh, did I break it? Like one of these like slidey doors. Nice little sink. Then we got the bathroom, uh, you know, it's like avocado green. Every little thing is gonna be all right uh, because there's some ectoplasm coming from the corner. It did come with uh, soaps. Now, there's no light in here, so you kind of like shower in the pitch black, which I find is kind of interesting. There's a little spot in the shower to put like your soap, but it almost looks like, you know, if a prisoner is like trying to like escape or hide a shank in the wall, I feel like that's what it kind of looks like. It's nice. It'll get the job done. The next day. It is the morning of San Diego Comic Con. We still don't have the ticket. I'm going to meet the guy at his hotel right now to go pick up the ticket. Couldn't find the fedora, so we're gonna have to go with the uh, taxidermy Mickey for the tacky tourist outfit. I'm still kind of nervous because um, if this ticket does not work when I get in, right? The thousands of dollars I've spent is literally for nothing. Like I can't get in. <laughs> The San Diego Comic Con. So my stress level is probably at like a 10 right now. Hopefully um, this works. So we gotta hop on a little like trolley, which will take us there. Um, I took a shower this morning. Y'all, that's a roach in the shower. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, cockroach in the shower. Let's uh, venture off to San Diego Comic Con. Okay, well, I just uh, had to rush into Starbucks. Uh, there was a homeless man waving a knife at me. So, um, that's how our morning is going. Welcome to San Diego. I was kind of terrified, yeah. Okay, we were at the hotel where I'm supposed to meet the guy. Um, this is a moment of truth. Well, we're halfway there. We gotta get the ticket then make sure it works. So I'm gonna try to meet him in the lobby right here. The ticket is real. We have the ticket. And now it is time to find out if this thing works. All right, here we go. San Diego Convention Center. Comic Con badge members only. All right, it's time to head in to San Diego Comic Con. We got our badge. We are inside San Diego Comic-Con. This has been such a long journey to get to this moment right here. This is one of the most stressful trips of my entire life, but we did it. We are officially inside San Diego Comic-Con. Wow, I, that's just like a weight has been lifted off my chest, right? That we are like officially here and it's happening. Um, so we're gonna end the video right here. We officially made it in. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Join the family. Welcome to the family. Because I'm gonna be posting multiple days of San Diego Comic Con, so if you wanna be notified when all the San Diego Comic Con videos drop, make sure to subscribe. All right guys, I love y'all. Please stay safe, and I'll see y'all very soon. Bye. That didn't really work that well with the mask off. Have you recently had butt pain? Hashtag Crohn's, we'll put that one right there. We kindly ask you to step out of the aisle to allow the customers to pass by. Take your attention as quickly as they can.